Hey, what's up, guys? Wanted to do a case study for you of a recent deal we completed. So this was a mortgage overage. And um, yeah, you can see here, here's a picture of a house, of the house that was foreclosed on. Then you've got the order from the court distributing the funds. And then you've got our a very crappy picture of the check that we got for our net profit. So... Here's how it all went down. Um, follow the basic steps, you know, the, the five-step formula that I teach, right? Found the homeowner, reached out to him, did, did our due diligence first, saw that there was an overage, made contact with the homeowner, sent them the paperwork, got it signed, forwarded it to our attorney. This was a fairly fast case. Uh, I think it was only two or three months, which is very fast usually it's three to four sometimes more especially if you're dealing with estate cases and you can see here there were two checks distributed okay and i'll go into why that was here in a minute all in our costs were about a, a thousand bucks for our attorney on this one and then our net profit was around thirteen thousand. and then i partnered on this with someone so my partner got half of that which was around 6,900. So that's kind of a breakdown of the numbers. Now, why are there two checks? Why were, You can see if you read the order here that someone got distributed 6,200 and then this 35,900, that, the, that was the amount we recovered on behalf of our client. And then out of that, our 13,000 13, was our cut, okay? You could see the order was signed on July 27th and then the, the check arrived from my attorney on August 12th, or it was cut on August 12th, probably arrived a couple of days after that. So around the 14th, 15th of August is when I got it in the mail. So why the two payments? This property actually had some liens. Not only did it have liens, the, our client actually had, there were some judgments against our client as well. Now, here's one thing I'll tell you guys. Number one, always good to do your due diligence, right? We were aware that there were liens on this property, and yet we move forward anyway. Just because there's liens on a property doesn't mean it's a bad deal. What you need to know is, okay, what is the amount of each lien, and is it still viable if all of the lien holders come forward? And even if they don't come forward, is it worth the risk? Now, keep in mind, guys, judgments and liens are not equal, okay? And they do not have, it's good to do research for judgments, but you want to make sure you know what liens are available. Judgments come secondary. And the reason is liens are secured. Liens basically are secured debt. Liens have a viable claim to excess funds. Judgments, on the other hand, do not always have they are not secured. Judgments in and of themselves are simply unsecured debts, okay? Just because someone has a judgment against them doesn't mean that that judgment holder can file a claim for the excess funds. I mean, they can, but it doesn't mean they'll get paid out. How do I know this? Because I tried to recover excess funds for a client who had a judgment and I was denied, we were denied by the court, we used an attorney and everything, and the reason we were denied is because the judgment was not recorded against the foreclosed property, and therefore there was no lien. It was simply a judgment. Uh, it was a million dollar judgment, 1.1 million. Okay, we were trying to recover sixty thousand on that case. So, little hint: liens. Know the liens. It, judgments. It's good to know, but. They're not always, you don't always have to take those into consideration because judgments are unsecured debt and they do not always have, you can't file claims. I mean, you can, anyone can file a claim, right? But judgments don't always have a priority to the funds over the homeowner, okay? Now a judgment lien, that's another story. Now, what else can I tell you about this deal? Um, nothing really. 
pretty straightforward deal. The client was the ex homeowner. Um, everything was done basically through email and it's a pretty straightforward case. So let me know if you have questions. Again, we just followed this process, guys. Remember the five-step process when it comes to recovering overages and surplus funds. Create your leads, conduct your research, contact your leads, contract your leads, and then profit. Submit your claim and profit. Five steps. That's what I teach in my program. Okay. How do we get those leads? How can we build our own list? How do we get the list? How do we do the research? How do we reach out to the clients? How do we skip trace? What do we say? What paperwork do we use? That's all covered in the course. And the link for that is down below. If you're brand new to surplus funds, guys, a good foundational training that's free is at overage syndicate.com. Same name as the YouTube channel. Just type it in your browser, overage syndicate.com. And that's it. So I wanted to share that case study, recent deal we did. I know it's been a while since I've done one of those. So wanted to share that with you and uh, hope you're having a great day. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.